Bhante, what is your opinion about sitting through pain? Many teachers advocate it because it creates equanimity and you learn how to deal with your resistance and others say it is extreme asceticism and to be avoided. Many thanks. Anyone who says that pain, that the forbearance or the bearing with pain is e extreme extremism, is an extreme and therefore in, in the sense of bad practice, is going against the Buddhist teaching, doesn't understand the Buddhist teaching. Maybe well-meaning, but misguided. There's, the Buddha said clearly in several places that one that forbearance one should true true patience means being means forbearing against pain, even such that it might take your life, even so extreme that it might kill you. And to understand this, or to, to verify this, to to argue this, we can we have to we can we can point to the what, what do we mean by um, what what are we what is the Buddha's teaching what is the path that the Buddha taught it's the path to my understanding is that it's the path to become completely objective and let's say invincible to all experience such that no experience that arises could possibly be a cause for suffering that, that there would be no clinging to any experience whatsoever no reaction no emotional reaction to any experience in the sense of being free being at complete peace complete peace no matter what arises you can't do that for a, as long as painful situations disturb you. So as long as you are averse to any type of pain or any situation or even averse to death, you can't attain the goal of the Buddhist teaching. This is only a part of the answer. The other part of the answer is that there certainly may be, along the way to getting to that extreme state or that ultimate state of true invincibility, there may be cases where you should quite reasonably um, reduce or change the situation. You know, so there may be situations that first of all, are overwhelming. So for a novice meditator to insist that they sit still no matter what sensations arise is unreasonable. It is more likely to create unwholesomeness. As long as one is, is um, affected by pain, you know, so when pain, a little bit of pain comes up, they start, going, they start to get upset. If you, if you ask them to sit through extreme pain, Instead of cultivating wholesome mindfulness patience, it could just cultivate aversion, uh, anxiety, even a dislike of the meditation practice. It can create very strong emotions, strong negative emotions. So for a beginner meditator, you have to um, know your limits and be able to push them, but not try to break through your limits, you know, not, not go beyond your limits. So when the pain gets truly unbearable, where you're, you're, you're just not able m emotionally to handle it, you, you're fully, it's fully reasonable to have the meditator move. So be mindful, lift your foot up, move it. Eventually, through repeated practice, the meditator will become more patient and more able to stand with the pain. As long as we understand that our goal is to become invincible to any situation, any any state. You know, it, it's up to us how, how quickly we're going to get there. So we can admit that we're not able to, to deal with it, the pain, without taking that as a, a dogma that when pain arises it is proper practice or it is the path to enlightenment to avoid the pain. Um, 
understanding that eventually you will cultivate tolerance and, and patience and objectivity to the extent that the pain no longer bothers you and you no longer have to move. The second reason is that there are certain cases where pain is a sign of something, where it is a sign that you are about to break your leg, for example, you're about to sprain your, your ankle or your leg, or the, you're about to cause injury to yourself. And obviously in those cases, it's, you know, your back injury. Some people have back problems. If they were to continue sitting, it might actually injure them. If you have a case for that, first of all, you have to be clear that you're not just making excuses or you're not just a hypochondriac. If you actually have some prior injury, many people come to meditation with... Um, with plates in their legs or their joints or in their backs or so on, you know, serious injuries. Now, these people can, in certain cases, um, reasonably should, in certain cases, change their their position. So that's the other um, situation where it's actually going to harm you. You can make a case for it. Now, you can also make a case for just sitting through it, letting yourself go. There's the case of Chakupala who, who did walking and sitting meditation even though he was, in order to heal his eyes, he was to lie down. Instead of lying down, he just did walking and sitting for three months and his, his, eyes, um, his eyes were destroyed. He went blind as a result of his extreme practice, but he also became enlightened. So, as a means of letting go, one can even let go of one's own... Um, one's own physical well-being. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. Now, it's important. The, the idea of extreme asceticism. The question is, well, then what is that? Extreme asceticism is the I, the concept that there's some benefit to hurting yourself. That pain is somehow intrinsically beneficial. You know, that pain is somehow a means of inflicting pain upon yourself. Somehow leads to enlightenment. It doesn't. Objectivity leads to enlightenment. So the ability to stay stay patient, patient in regards to uh, pleasant sensations, pleasant situations, and patient in regards to unpleasant situations equally, that is what leads to enlightenment. The, the extreme practice is thinking that there's some benefit in either pleasant or unpleasant situations. Both of those are extreme. There is no benefit in either. There is only benefit in being objective towards them. So it's quite a clear teaching. I don't think there is any reason to be confused.